You're listening to the Be a Better Lawyer podcast with Dina Cataldo, episode 137. So how do high achieving lawyers break through generations of being taught that we have to grind ourselves into the ground to get results for clients, build a successful business and create a life we love? While law schools are busy teaching the rule of law, they're slacking on teaching us how to be a better human to create for ourselves the success we thought we'd achieve after law school. This podcast bridges the gap between law school and life. Hello there, my friend. So today, We're going to get focused. We're going to get super focused, whether or not you've got a goal or not. This episode is going to help you strengthen your focus. And we think that having focus means having less things to do, meaning, you know, juggling less balls. And yeah, we could do that. We could manipulate the outside world in order to change what we're feeling. Sure, you know, we could take on less clients. We could stop doing the things we love to do. Or we could also build up those tools that will help us strengthen our focus. And that means you can implement this not only with looking forward towards the goals you want to create for this year, but even if you don't have a goal, focusing on your day-to-day tasks. That's going to save you a ton of time. And this is going to go way beyond turning off notifications and scheduling time to check your email or voicemails, all of which are helpful. These are actually going to strengthen your brain. It's going to be like a workout for your brain to build that focus into your life. Yes, they're going to take some time getting used to, just like any new workout. And yes, they're going to be uncomfortable if you've never tried them before. But that is the point. The discomfort is actually what helps us make the most progress. Whenever you've experienced the most growth, was it when you were super comfortable or when you decided you were going to stretch yourself? And if you're building muscle in the gym, you have to like uh, overload your muscle so that you can build that muscle. This is going to strengthen your brain in a very similar way. It's going to be when you stretch yourself that you're going to see the biggest impact in your life. So today I'm going to help you learn how to create more focus using these tools. All right. So having a goal is great. You know I'm all about goals. In fact, the last few episodes, if you didn't listen to them, are all about creating that goal. It really helps us focus our brain when we have something that we are working towards. But what happens when you're in the middle of your day and you don't feel like doing something that's going to move you further towards your long-term goal? Or you decide that, you know what, now's not the right time or that I'll do it later because that will happen. Those are all thoughts that are going to pop into your brain. So why aren't you focusing? Why aren't you focusing on your task? Why aren't you focusing on your goal? I mean, obviously you want to complete it or you wouldn't have said that you wanted to do that or taken on that client. So why are you unfocused or ignoring the small actions day to day that are going to get you closer to what you want to create? So I see this a lot with my clients and it's totally normal. Our brain looks at long-term goals and thinks things like, it's hard, I don't know how, I don't know the right way to do it, I don't know where to start. And that's our toddler brain. It's also known as the less evolved primal part of our brain that I reference. And our toddler brain doesn't want to do hard things, so it keeps us unfocused. It wants to watch TV, snack, fiddle around on the phone, jump from task to task without thinking too hard, um, watch a program while doing non-billable work. And all of that is eating away from our focus, eating away from our hard, What I want to say our hard-earned time, but it's not our hard-earned time, it's the time that we get. We think we're unfocused because we have a lot to do. We have client calls, files to review, marketing to do in our business. But really, we're unfocused because we're thinking thoughts. It doesn't matter how much is on our plates. It's how we think about what's on our plates that's creating or not creating our focus. When we are unfocused, we're thinking thoughts like, I'm behind. I don't have enough time. I don't know where to start. And these thoughts create feelings like stress, anxiousness, worry, overwhelm. We believe we feel this way because we have X number of items on our plate. 
And that is simply not the case. It seems like our brain is describing reality, though. It seems like when we think thoughts like I'm behind or I'm overwhelmed, that that's just true. But here's the thing. Our thoughts are not true. They're made up of interpretations we decide to have of our world. And the reason we know this is because people can think about the items, the number of items on someone's plate in a very different way. I could have a hundred things to do this week and I know I'm going to get the most important things done and that's not a problem. And then there's other people who have a hundred things on this week and they think, oh my gosh, where am I going to start? I don't know what to do. Um, This is too much. I feel overwhelmed. How do so? What's the difference? It's the way that we think about things. While I'm feeling like it's not a problem, I'm totally confident it's all going to get done. I feel very certain that I know exactly what I need to do. Another person might feel overwhelmed, stressed, and anxious. And that's a lot of the clients that come to me. Now, I have been there. I have felt that overwhelm. I have felt that anxiousness. And I do sometimes recognize when that feeling comes up. In fact, that's the practice, is recognizing when that feeling comes up. So what we're going to talk about today to strengthen your awareness, that is going to help you big time get your focus in check. So I want you to recognize that these are just thoughts that are impacting how you feel and impacting your productivity, impacting your focus. So the tools that I'm sharing with you today are going to do a few things for you. One, they're going to help you see these thoughts more clearly. When we can see them, then we can begin understanding that they are totally separate from us and that we can change them. Two, you're going to begin making shifts you need to think thoughts that are more productive because we get to choose those thoughts. We get to choose our reality. We can choose to believe we're behind or we can choose to believe that we've got things handled. Three, They will help you train your brain to refocus on your goal every single day and remind you how you want to think about your goal over and over again. Just like learning a language, repetition is key. We've got to practice over and over again or our proficiency fades. Same thing with the gym, right? You can't just lift a couple dumbbells and then be like, okay, I'm good. No, you got to keep coming back to the gym over and over again or your fitness is not going to stay up, right? Okay, so here they are, six magical tools that are going to help you focus. Oh, and as I was writing this, I came up with a seventh one. So there's actually seven magical tools. So hold on for that one. So remember, this is going to be uncomfortable. (laughs) I just want to preface that again, because notice if you hear these and you think, I don't want to do that, or that sounds nice, but I don't think that's going to work for me, or I should totally try that, but not right now. Or maybe you'll even think the thought that, you know, I tried that one time and it just didn't work. (laughs) This is not about trying something one time. This is about practicing just like the gym right? This is a practice. That is how you strengthen your brain. That's how you strengthen your focus. Just like you would go into a gym and you would strengthen your arms by lifting weights. That is what this is about. And when you notice these thoughts, I don't want to do that. That doesn't sound good. That is your brain shrinking back into autopilot toddler brain. And that's your brain thinking that sounds hard and is whining. You wouldn't let a toddler run your house. So don't let a toddler with a tantrum run your brain. Right. This is up to you, your choice on what you want to create. What is harder for you, being uncomfortable or looking back at your life and thinking, you know, I could have built my practice easier and spent more time with my family Um, or I could have started my own business or my own practice if only I had tried something different. So just recognize that you're giving something up if you do not create a practice for yourself. And it doesn't have to include all of these tools, but it definitely should include a couple of these tools. I do all of them. (laughs) So, So I want you to recognize that a compilation of these tools is going to be the most effective and get you where you want to go faster. All right. So number one magical tool is to write down your vision in detail. So this could mean a couple different things. It could mean 
looking at your full year and looking at, okay, well, what do I want to plan for this year? How do I want to, what do I want to create? How many clients do I want? Um, how do I want to feel during the year? How much space do I want to make for myself that, so that I can create the habits that I want to create? Like really fleshing out everything, how everything in your life is impacted so that you feel exactly what you want to feel and create exactly what you want to create, whether it's in your business or something else. Another thing that this could mean is sitting down every morning and having your vision for your day. So if you have a goal, this works can work for you. And if you don't have a goal, this can work for you. You sit down first thing in the morning and you say, okay, what do I want my day to look like? I want to have a couple hours of focus on a certain project. I want to make sure I teach this certain skill to an associate. Here's an hour for that. Um, I want to make sure that I make time for myself to work out. This is what's going to happen. I know that I want to eat really nourishing foods. This is what I'm going to eat. I mean, I want to spend time with my friends. This is where I'm going to put that time. I need to make sure I, I contact them. Here's when I'm going to contact them. So like have a vision for your day. Writing it down is imperative if you want to keep focused on it. Because if we just run into our day willy-nilly, then you know it's everything's up in the air and that's when we start feeling that anxiousness and overwhelm because we haven't made a plan for ourselves. We haven't made a vision for ourselves in our day and gone through our day intentionally. So that is magical tip number one. The second tool that I highly recommend I highly recommend all of these, but let me, let me just tell you that journaling every day on my goals has made a huge difference. It has made everything so much easier in my brain. (laughs) It feels better. It feels more efficient. It feels more focused. And I notice that focus coming back to me in my business. So what is, here's some prompts for you. Okay. So what's your belief in achieving whatever it is you want to accomplish on a scale from one to 10, ask yourself why it's that number. Like what thoughts are you having? What beliefs do you hold that are keeping you at a seven out of 10, let's say? And then ask yourself, what would you believe if you were at a 10 in your belief? Like what are the thoughts that you would have? How would you feel? Another great question um, that I got from Elizabeth Salazar is what's your commitment to achieving your goal on a scale from one to 10? And if your commitment were at a 10 right now, what would you believe already? This helps us to see the thoughts that aren't serving us and begin shifting us to the thoughts that do serve us. And when I do this particular exercise before I write copy of my business, before I take some action and make some decisions, I notice a difference in how I show up. My brain isn't confused. It's not wasting time. It's focused. It knows exactly what it needs to do. But that takes refocusing our brain. And so I do this over and over and over again. All right. Magical tool number three, post-it notes. I love little post-it notes. And I'll even take these little, um, I'll start typing them out and cut them out and make them look really nice and put them on my computer screen. But what I do with those post-it notes is write down the thoughts I want to think. So if you are doing number one and number two, you'll have some thoughts to work with. You'll know which ones that you don't believe yet, and you'll see the thoughts that will serve you. So put those thoughts around your home. Put them in places to remind you of them throughout the day. These are your mantras. This is how you are going to start retraining your brain to be focused on what you want to create for yourself. That can be an incredible help. And I love doing that because I love seeing a thought that I, I'm like, oh, I totally believe that. I don't need that one up anymore. Like that is, has become a part of me. Let me see what else I want to believe. That is so much fun. All right. Magical tool number four, hire a coach. When I coach people, I am helping them continue generating that focus every single week. That's one of the reasons they get results faster and it feels easier is because they have someone who can see their brain. And when they're journaling and they have questions, they have someone to go to. And when they start really believing thoughts that don't serve them, they have someone to go to. That is so much fun that I get to do that. Like It is just so amazing to me that I have the opportunity to help someone when I had some of the same issues and I didn't know about coaching and I didn't know who to go to for help and I didn't feel comfortable talking to anyone about my problems at my where I was working. I mean, 
I think that I posted something on Instagram the other day. And if you're not following me there, why not? I'm at Dina.Cataldo. So I was posting something there the other day about um, one of my friend's books. And she was talking about law firm culture. And I had um, written a post about how lawyers were just so judgmental of each other. And my my coaching clients have ever even said, you know, it wasn't so much the bosses that were the ones who were creating this pressure to work longer hours and to look busy and to stay, you know, all of those things. It was the other associates, their peers, who were making judgments as to when people were leaving early and were making judgments as to whether or not they were working hard enough. And what does that even mean? Like, why aren't we looking to ourselves and understanding that we are productive, that we can be focused and not, and why are we caring about all of these other outside factors and these people who probably aren't getting as much done because they're just fiddling around on their phones because they are un focus. They're doing unfocused work and they are not getting the results that you could be making if you simply changed the way you thought about things. And that's what this podcast is about, is really changing the way you think about things and strengthening your focus and understanding what those tools are to help you. Okay, so magical tip number four was to hire a coach. Magical tip number five. Okay, I love this. I love having a text, a book, um, it could be, you know, poetry is your thing, whatever it is. I like having a text that grounds me on my nightstand so I can read it before bed. Um, I like books like ones written by Eckhart Tolle, or right now I have The Kabbalion on my nightstand. Um, I mean, any other book that's going to fill my brain with Uh, like a quiet reminder, a thoughtful reminder about my awareness and my thoughts. And it could be something different for you. Maybe you feel grounded and really at peace when you read whatever fiction novel that you have, whatever you have, but like a text that really grounds me and helps me think differently before bed is what I want. So if you have a thoughtful fiction novel, that would be (laughs) a go-to. But that's really something that helps me quiet my brain before bed. Another thing just to add on here, don't use any electronics. Those are going to zap our energy rather than nourish us. So don't go to that as like kind of a unthoughtful way of ending your night like really ending it with intention you could even write before bed sometimes I do that and that is where we really start to quiet our mind to prepare us to to sleep all right so tool number six meditation or breathing exercises okay so bear with me here because I know lawyers are notorious for hating meditation and hating sitting in quiet But this soothes the nervous system. It calms the thoughts of our minds. But the real reason I believe it's so effective as a tool to help us focus is because it teaches us it's okay to be uncomfortable. It's okay to feel awkward. And the more we practice discomfort in the comfort of our home, the easier it will be to have those difficult conversations with people that take focus that... Um, you know, to really stick with the practices that make us uncomfortable, like journaling our thoughts. I mean, we don't want to see our thoughts for, um, especially the ones that are really holding us back. Our brain tries to prevent us from seeing it because it doesn't want us to feel uncomfortable. But when we sit down and we meditate, even if it's for just five minutes in total quiet, that can bring up feelings of discomfort. Uh, I was talking to a client recently about um, the challenges she has with just staying in the quiet and keeping that focus. And she notices when she's, you know, doing non-billable um, work that she will turn something on in the background and she knows that it's sapping her time, that it's not working for her and she's having thoughts like I'm bored, that um, this is hard, that this doesn't feel good. I don't want to do this timesheet work. Know that those thoughts are normal and meditation can help us see those thoughts. When we get really quiet, we can just start noticing, oh, this is making me uncomfortable. I'm thinking this is boring. I'm thinking this is hard. I'm thinking I don't want to do this. All of those thoughts are necessary to see so that we can diffuse them. And that's going to be helpful with the journaling exercise I just talked to you about. Okay, so here's your bonus tool. Your bonus tool to strengthening your focus is visualization. 
Remind yourself with visualization every day what you want. And if you've done number one, you've created a vision for yourself, then you'll have that available for you to do this visualization. You can sit down. It could be 10 minutes in your morning when it's nice and quiet. You know, create that time for yourself. Maybe it's before you go to bed. But ask yourself, like, like visualize yourself just like you would be in a movie. What you want and remind yourself why you want it and how you feel, really feeling it throughout your body, what you would feel like if you already have it. Confident, certain, peace, um, what accomplished, fulfilled, grateful, all of those feelings, that is going to help you with this visualization process and it's going to help you change your identity. Just like those post-it notes I was talking about where you are strengthening your focus by having a little post-it note that says something that, you know, a thought that's helpful, one that maybe you picked up during your journaling practice or with your session with your coach, you put those on somewhere where you can see and then you try them on when you visualize make this really visceral like like you're you you could touch it so take that time and the number one tool to really think about what you want and who you need to become to create that vision for yourself and when you remind yourself of this every single day when you're using these tools you will create that focus that you need for yourself to achieve what you want to achieve And you can do this even if it's like you don't have a goal and you just want to get your day to feel amazing. Visualize how it's going to play out. Visualize, hey, I'm going to have this meeting. It's going to go amazingly. I know that um, so-and-so is, you know, in favor of this position, but you know what? I've got this other position that I want to share and it is going to be, I'm going to articulate it so well. This is what I'm going to say. I mean, you can play this all out in your mind how your day is going to go. Okay. Okay. Wow. Those were some, those were some tools. Yeah. Which one are you going to implement? Maybe you get to pick a couple. Maybe you're already implementing some of them and you can use something from this podcast to bolster it. Once we really, you know, understand our vision, understand what we want, create a plan, then we can start implementing these tools to begin focusing on our plan. And if you don't have a plan yet, you can implement these tools just to get your mind to calm down. And you can start focusing on what's in front of you and what the very next step is. That's always a great question for ourselves. What's the next thing I can do and the next thing I can do? Now, the problem with a vision, the problem with a plan is that most of us don't sit down to write out exactly what our vision is. This is incredibly important. Once we write it down, it becomes more real than it has ever been. So you are going to resist this part. I did. I totally resisted it. And once I started writing it down and really seeing that vision more and more clearly and reminding myself of it every single day, it helped me create the focus. And when I create the focus, I can do the things I know are necessary in my business to create what I want to create in my life that I want to create. So here's where a coach can be really helpful because I help my clients create their vision one-on-one and I ask them questions and I get them to really flesh it out because when we flesh it out, then we have an area to focus on. We're less busy procrastinating and questioning and more, you know, focused on what we want to create and how we're going to do it. So if you're curious about what a coach like me can do to help you accomplish your goals, let me share with you exactly what I do with my clients. I help them get clarity on exactly what they want and they learn how to make decisions faster so they don't waste time ruminating and I teach them how to use their calendar instead of resenting their calendar and then each week I help them refocus on what's important to them in our coaching calls and with messaging in between sessions to support them when they need it and this support from a coach is key to accomplishing goals faster because our brain hasn't yet built the habits to continue refocusing on our goal. And once we start building those habit muscles, we begin to make more and more traction towards our goals. It's like watching dominoes fall over slowly at first and then they go faster and faster and faster. And if this sounds like what you need right now, book a strategy session with me. There you're gonna get a super clear idea, a super clear vision of what you want and you're gonna learn exactly how to make it happen. 
And to do this, you can just book a call with me at dinacataldo.com. And it's gonna be fun. I make these things fun. All right, so I hope you have a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.